Hey, it's Harker from Play. Today, I'm going to show you how you can populate one of your Play prototypes using the New York Times API. We're going to do this using Play's New York Times API prefab. And if you want to follow along, you can just check out the New York Times API project in the Learn section. But before we get into the interaction, I first want to show you what the structure of the page looks like, because that's going to affect how we create this interaction. So on my page, I have this results stack. And inside here, we have a bunch of these cell components. Each one of these components has a thumbnail, and then it has two pieces of text, a title and a byline. We're going to populate the thumbnail, the title, and the byline, all using the API. So let's get started. In Interaction Node, with my full page selected, you can see that I've already added this New York Times API prefab. But if I wanted to add it, I can do it the same way you would add any other prefab or trigger. Just search it in the Quick Add menu or the Interactions panel. You can see it's right there. So inside this prefab, we have a fetch node, which is just loading that API. If you want to know how fetch works, check out the video I've linked below in the description that talks more about that fetch API. If you're on a paid plan, you can also unlock this prefab to see what's happening under there, learn more, and even customize it. We recommend everyone check out this documentation so you understand how the API works and also so you can generate your own API key. In order to make this work, you need to make that API key and then paste it right in here as one of the prefab controls. Speaking of prefab controls, we also have fetch on load. Now, when this is turned on, it means that it's going to fetch from the API as soon as the page loads. So I'm actually going to go ahead and turn that on. You can see it just loaded and now we're getting some content in here. I'm going to show you why this is happening and also how we can add in this title of each article in that open spot. So on these bottom sections here, we have three action sections. The first is API loading. So you can play actions when the API is loading. That was when we had that spinner. You can also do actions when the API responds. So when it loads successfully, obviously that's why we're loading everything in here. And then you can also play actions if there's an error while loading the API. So as you can see, we have lots of images and bylines in here. That's all happening from this API response. So when it responds, we're going to loop through all of the children of that result stack. So that's all of the cells here. And for each one, we're going to save variables for that component. And each instance can have different values for the component variables. So let me show how we're doing that in this set variable action. We are looping through each item. And then because each item is a component and we want to access one of the components variables, we need to cast it as a component. So we're casting it that cell component as a component, and then we can access the component variable. Now let's actually walk through that together so it makes a bit more sense. I'm gonna add a new variable here, use an expression, and now we're going to loop. I'm gonna use the second one, dot item. So we're going through each item in the loop, each cell, dot as component. And now we wanna type in that component name. So it's gonna be cell, and you can select any of these instances because they all have the same main component. Now, moving out of the parentheses, when I press period here, now I can access all of those component properties as well as the component variables. So the one we want here is title. Now let's take a look at the right side or the value that we're setting these variables to be. So let's go back up to this first one. You can see the beginning of this is a variable. So this variable is inside this prefab and we're saving the entire API response as a dictionary variable. And so that means it's saving it with key value pairs. Just briefly, what is a key value pair? Well, the key is like the label and the value is the data. So the key here is byline. The data might be Zach or Dave Phillips or Katie and Lisa. Those are all of the data or the values associated with the key. So now let's do exactly this for the title. So we're gonna open the expression editor here. First, we're gonna start with that dictionary variable. So response dot. And when we do a dot after a dictionary variable, you'll see these dictionary properties. So we're going to do that key name. The first one we want to do here is results. So we just saw. Next, we want to loop through every item in the results. So that's each different story. So we're going to use this key name again. Instead of doing a name this time, we're going to do loop dot index. So basically every single time this loops through, it's going to be using a different article, which is why we have different images, different bylines, and very soon we'll have different titles. So that's that part. And then one more key. This time it is title. 
Okay, so now that's saving it as this variable, but it's still not updating in here. That we need to do on the component level. On this main component, so therefore on all component instances, we are listening for these variables to change. And when the image variable changes, we are going to set the image, that little thumbnail there, we're setting that to be the image variable data. Same thing is true for the byline. And now we need to do that for the title. So we are going to select the title in here. Again, this is inside the main component. So this is gonna be applied to all instances. And then for the text, we're just gonna click on the left side here. And now we're going to use that title uh, component variable. Nice. So you can see just by adding that in, now on my phone, all of the titles have now loaded in, in addition to the bylines and the thumbnails. And that is how you will use the New York Times API to load the New York Times data into your play prototype. Thanks so much for watching this video.